video for Math 98, we're looking at examples from homework number, it's not number 9, homework number 4. And these are like problems 14 through 20 in sections 12.6. And this is about the division of polynomials. So we've seen how to add, subtract, and multiply polynomials. What about division? A problem written like this, x squared plus 7x plus 10 over x plus 2, or sometimes it's written like this. In this case, we have two methods, factoring and long division, and I'd like to go through both of them. Let's take a look at this first problem, this first format. x squared plus 7x over 10, x plus 2. Can you factor the numerator? I think if you look at it, for a little bit. You can see this has to be x and x. And you're looking factors of 10 that add up to 7. That would be 5 and 2. And here, the denominator is x plus 2. You know by now that these will simplify just to x plus 5. This x plus 5 is called the solution, or sometimes called the quotient. What happens when you divide both of these? Now, as an alternative, we can use something called long division. And while long division is kind of silly in this problem, in many problems, it's the only way we can do this. And this goes back to maybe a problem you learned how to do back in third grade. If you wanted to do 17 divided by 10, you might have written this out. And then you would take 10 and you'd ask, hmm, how many times does 10 go into 17? You might say once. Then you'd multiply 1 times 10, get 10. Then you would subtract, right? And you'd have 7. Since 7 is less than 10, you might say the answer is 1 remainder 7, or better yet, 1 plus 7 tenths, which, back in arithmetic, you just wrote this way. Now, I went through this process because with polynomials, we follow the same thing. Here, we have x squared plus 7x plus 10, and we're going to divide that by x plus 2. Just like the first question you asked here is, how many times does this go into this? How many times does x go into x squared? And the answer would be x times. And just like here, you did 1 times 10 and got example 10, I'm going to do x times this, but notice I have to multiply by x by both of these terms. x times x is x squared, and x times 2 is 2x. Now, we'd like to subtract. Sometimes people use the term, instead of subtraction, since this has multiple terms, to change the signs and add. So x squared minus x squared is 0. 7x minus 2x is 5x. Then bring down the 10. If this numerator had been, if this dividend had been larger, like 175, I would have brought down the next item, the same item here. Now ask yourself, what times x goes into 5x? And the answer is 5. 5 times x is 5x. 5 times 2 is 10. And now if we subtract, or change my signs and add, I get 0 and 0, so this is what I get. Notice my quotient is the same as the previous method. Now this should show you that factoring can be your friend in these problems. If you can factor the problem, it certainly makes it a lot easier than doing it by long division. There's a couple of things to note. The degree of the numerator is reduced by the degree of denominator in the answer. We started with a degree of 2, and the denominator has a degree of 1. And the answer, x plus 5, has a degree of 1. And 2 minus 1 is 1. So that's something to note happens here. And if there is a common factor, we say the denominator is a factor of the numerator. And we also have something interesting that's going on with graphs. Let's go back to our previous example. We saw that this is 
x plus 5 times x plus 2 over x plus 2. However, if we wanted to look at the graph of this, we certainly know that x cannot equal negative 2. You know that from the previous section. So what that means is when you draw a graph, when you get to negative 2, there cannot be a value. Now, we also did this. Now, that's legal unless x equals negative 2. But if x doesn't equal negative 2, these are equal values, and you could say this equals x plus 5. Now, what that says about the graph is this. This graph of this function is exactly the same as x plus 5. And I'm just going to draw x plus 5 in here. The only problem is when you would get to negative 2, you can't have a value. So what that means is you literally have a hole in the graph right here. You have a hole where the value for x equals negative 2 could be. If we look at our graphing calculator, and I clear this out, I put in my original expression, x squared plus 7x plus 10 divided by x plus 2. Notice the parentheses in the numerator and denominator. And I'm going to pick a window from minus 5 to 5. And let's say, well, minus 10 to 10 should be fine. Here's my graph, and you'll notice it looks just like a line. And you say, hey, wait a minute. It looks like there's a value at negative 2. But I'm going to hit second trace and hit this number 1 value here. And I'm going to put in negative 2. And notice, no value shows up. What that tells me is that, in reality, there is a hole in this graph. It's just that the calculator doesn't show it. Now, in this case, notice x plus 2 is a factor of the numerator. What if it's not a factor of the numerator, like this one? If you factored the top here, you still get x plus 5 times x plus 2, but this is over x plus 3. What happens in that case? Well, I'm going to go back to my calculator and have it do this one for me. So I'm just going to go over to this, y equals, and change this to x plus 3. I'm going to take the same window, and I'm going to graph this. Here, you'll notice a very, very different graph than the one that we saw before you'll notice that there is an asymptote at negative 3. So if the denominator is not a factor, is not a factor of the numerator, you have a vertical asymptote at that value. So, let's summarize this. If the denominator is a factor of the numerator, there is a hole in the graph where the denominator is equal to 0. If the denominator is not a factor of the numerator, there is a vertical asymptote where the denominator equals 0. So, let's predict the outcome of this division. If I divide x to the fourth minus 5x squared plus 4 by x minus 2, I should get a cubic quotient. What that means is that my highest power should be x cubed. And that I can see from x to the fourth divided by x to the first. Now let's actually do this division. And I'm going to do this by long division. And I'm going to show you a trick. You'll notice I'm leaving some space in here. And there's a reason for that. Let's try to divide this. How many times does x go into x to the fourth? You'd say x to the third. It gives you x to the fourth minus 2x to the third. Now, here's why I left a space. There is no x to the third term here. But I can add it in. I could say 0 times x to the third because 0 times x to the third is just 0, and adding 0 is always OK. 
Now I'm going to subtract, which is the same as changing the signs and adding. I'll get 0, 2x cubed. Then I'll bring down the next one, which is 5x squared. How many times does x go into 2x cubed? That would be 2x squared. 2x squared times x is 2x cubed. 2x squared times negative 2 is negative 4x squared. Again, I'm going to subtract, change the signs, and add. I get 0, negative x squared, and I'm going to bring down the plus 4. How many times does x go into minus x squared? That would be minus x. That gives you minus x squared. Minus x times x is minus x squared. Minus x times minus 2 is plus 2x. And once again, I'm going to put a 0 in there. And let's subtract by changing the signs and adding. So, how many times does negative 2 go into negative 2x? And x minus 2 go into negative 2x. That would be negative 2 times. Let's do this times this. Be negative 2x. This times this would be plus 4. And if you subtract or change the signs and add, you get 0. That means that this is a factor of this original. That means that if I were to graph this x to the fourth minus 5x squared plus 4 divided by x minus 2, I would have a whole at the value x equals 2. Okay, let's do another one. Here, we're going to consider this expression. We're going to divide. Now, you could do that problem in the same manner you did the previous one. Or you could be clever. And you could remember that this is a sum of cubes. A few quarters ago, you had this idea. That this could be factored this way. x cubed plus 1 was factored this way. If you look at that, then these, of course, will divide out, and you will get this. Now, since x plus 1 is a factor of the numerator and the denominator, there's a whole at x equals negative 1. If you have to divide that, long division, it's a little bit more complicated. Notice I have x cubed and then I jump down to 1. And it, just as in the last problem, I'm going to add some of my missing terms. My missing terms are an x squared term and an x term. And adding 0x squared and 0x doesn't change anything. What do you multiply x by to get x cubed? That would be x squared. x squared times x is x cubed. x squared times 1 is this. Subtract. Minus x squared. What do you multiply this by? I'm sorry, this one up here was a minus, guys. What do you multiply this by to get minus x squared? That would be minus x. Change the signs and add. What do you multiply x plus 1 to get x plus 1? That would be just plain old 1. And that gives you x plus 1. Subtract that and you get 0. Is the denominator a factor of the numerator? Yes. Is there an asymptote or whole? There is a whole. And the whole happens at negative 1. And if I were to plug negative 1 into this quotient right here, that would give me the value that the whole would have to be. So if I plug negative 1 into x squared minus x plus 1, that's going to give you 1 plus 1 plus 1, or 3. That would be where my whole would be. OK, here's one I'd like you to try by yourself. See if you can do this, and then try the, turn on the video when you're completed. OK, I'm going to use long division to divide. Now, notice this is not written in order. Standard form means you should write this in descending order of your exponents. So I have an x cubed and x squared. And I can bet I'm going to need this 0x here. So I'm going to put that in there. What do you multiply x by to get 3x cubed? That would be 3x squared. 
multiply, you should get this. Subtract. Okay. What do you multiply x by to get minus 5x squared? That would be minus 5x. Minus 5x times x is minus 5x squared. Minus 5x times 2 is minus 10x. Change the signs. Get 10x minus 1. What do you multiply x by to get 10x minus 1? That would be 10. 10 times x is 10x, and 10 times 2 is 20. When you subtract here, you do not get 0, so this is not a factor of the numerator. The answer is no, it's not a factor of the numerator. In this case, we have an asymptote. That asymptote occurs when the denominator is 0, and that happens at x equals negative 2. I hope you have found this video useful.